What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be talking about how to make your Star Trek Online builds look more authentic to the Star Trek TV shows. One of the really interesting things about Star Trek Online is that people don't always go there for an MMO experience. A lot of players are really there for a more Star Trek experience. Meaning a lot of people really aren't interested in raids or guilds or playing with a bunch of different players. A lot of people are there just to mess around with the stuff they've seen in the TV shows and movies. Star Trek Online offers a lot of customization in how you set up your character and your ship, but there are plenty of people out there who want to make their ship look like how it would in the shows. One of the biggest immersion killers in my opinion is having a ship that has a bunch of different weapons on it and several of them are different colors than the main weapons. Like say if you're using a phaser build with sensor linked phasers. Most of your phasers are going to be blue, but you're probably going to have a few that are orange or red or whatever other color to accommodate unique phasers with special procs or for set bonuses. That's why today I'm going to be going over how you can get your ship build as canon looking as possible while still doing a reasonable amount of DPS. Basically, think of this as a guide to roleplay builds that can still keep up in the advanced TFOs and even the elite TFOs with a decent team. In the shows and movies, the normal armaments for starships are usually just beam arrays and cannons along with a torpedo or two. So the way I've set up these cannon inspired builds are really just modified energy weapon builds. So you'll want to use a beam overload build for most of these, or if you prefer you could use fire at will instead. Or if you're using a ship with cannons, you could set up a scatter volley build or a rapid fire build. I'm not going to go into too much detail into how to set up these kind of builds, mostly because I've already done it before. If you're unfamiliar with the basics of any of these energy weapon builds, I'll link a guide to them down below. As you can see, I'm using the Legendary Sovereign for this build, but the nice thing about energy weapon builds is that they're very versatile, meaning you can put them on pretty much any ship you want. The gear and the traits will mostly remain the same regardless of the ship. The biggest changes are going to be with your bridge officer seating. If it's an escort, it's going to be more tactical heavy. If it's a cruiser, it's going to be more engineering heavy. And if it's a science ship, it's going to be more science heavy. But that's all pretty easy to work around. Same with the specialization seating. I chose the Legendary Sovereign for this build because I wanted to have access to the Miracle Worker abilities. So I have access to narrow sensor bands and mixed armament synergy. But you can adapt this to any of the other specializations. And in the end, these are mostly space bar rebuilds. They don't have to have all the crazy meta abilities. I set up a similar build to this on the Legendary Galaxy, which has command seating, which allows me to use Call of Emergency Artillery 3. It's not the most useful ability on energy weapon builds, but a Galaxy class that can summon in a bunch of Defiance gave this build a real Dominion War vibe that I liked. Temporal's always easy, you can just go with Recursive Shearing 3. Over at Subsystem Safeties is useful on energy weapon builds because of the power level buffs, so you can use that for intel. And pilot seating is, well, still pilot seating. Nothing there's gonna really be that helpful unless you have synthetic good fortune. Now, what weapons you're going to want to use is largely going to depend on what ship you're using. For Federation ships, obviously you're going to want to use some kind of phaser, but the way phasers look and sound has changed many times over the years, so each era is going to have a different kind of phaser. Standard phasers in Star Trek Online look just like the phasers you see throughout the Next Generation era. Agony phasers also look and sound virtually identical. So any ship seen in the Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and even in the Star Trek Online era could use these. Agony phasers have a much better proc on them, so they'll do a bit more damage, but they are lockbox weapons, so they're going to be more expensive. Whereas standard phasers you can find pretty much anywhere in the game. There's also a few unique set phasers with the same look as well, like the phasers from the Trilithium or the Prolonged set. If you're running a ship with a more original series vibe, there are multiple ways to get original series style phasers. The first and probably the quickest is from the original Tier 1 Constitution. This ship will come with two original series style phaser beam arrays. If you have the ship claimed on the C store, which you can still do if you have the Temporal Agent starter pack, you can claim the ship, remove the phaser beams, dismiss the ship, and then claim it again and repeat until you have enough. If you don't have the Temporal starter pack or the expansion pack, you'll have to pay Dilithium for the tier 1 constitution, and you won't be able to reclaim it for free, so dismissing it and then reclaiming it again with Dilithium could get expensive. Fortunately, there are two other options for original series style weapons. The episode Everything Old is New from the old Spectre arc rewards an original series style phaser beam array, so replaying that episode multiple times should get you enough beam arrays to outfit any ship. The other option is from the K-13 fleet holding. This in my opinion is the best option. It's a bit more expensive because you'll need to buy these weapons with dilithium and fleet credits, but because they're fleet weapons they'll be a much higher level than the other two options, so you'll end up spending less on upgrading them. K-13 also offers much more variety. You'll find TOS versions of beam arrays, dual beam banks, cannons, even photon torpedoes. The downside with doing all TOS weapons is that there's no Omni Beam. So if you're going to want to be doing a Dual Beam Bank build, you're going to be pretty limited with your aft weapons. For the motion picture era, pulse phasers are really going to be the closest thing you can get. Before the CBS and Viacom merger, the usage rights for certain things in the movies was still pretty iffy. One of these things was the sound effect from the phasers from Wrath of Khan. This is why pulse phasers aren't an exact replica of what we saw in the movie, but they are still pretty close. 
Pulse Facers also have a really nice proc on them, so they're actually pretty useful weapons. The downside is that they are lockbox weapons, so they are going to be expensive. In fact, most of the weapons I'll be mentioning from this point on will also be lockbox. Sorry guys, Space Barbie gets expensive sometimes. If you're using a ship featured in Star Trek Discovery, you actually have a few options. For the 23rd Century Discovery ships, there are sensor-linked, integrity-linked, and emitter-linked phasers. All three of these look and sound exactly the same, but each one has a different proc on them. Sensor Linked is the best because it buffs crit severity, but it's also going to make them the most expensive. Integrity and Emitter Link buff hull and shields respectively, which aren't as good for DPS, but will be less expensive. There's actually one more option for these Discovery Era style phasers. The episode Downfall in the Age of Discovery arc rewards a phaser beam array with this visual effect. The big difference is that it doesn't have the proc from one of the lockbox versions. It actually has the same proc as standard phasers, kind of like the original series weapons do. This version will also only be available in a beam array. Now, there is one more option for the 23rd Century Discovery Era phasers, Advanced Phaser Beam Arrays. These are the phaser beams that we saw the Enterprise using in Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery. These have a decent proc on them, so they're not bad for damage, but the downside is that getting access to them is kind of tricky, and by tricky, I mean expensive. You have to own either of two ships to access them. The Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, aka the Discovery Constitution, which is a promo ship, or the Legendary version, which is only available in the 10th Anniversary Bundle. The other downside is that these are also only available in Beam Array. Now, if you're looking for something to go with a 32nd Century ship from Star Trek Discovery, there are two options, both of which are lockbox phasers. The Federation 32nd Century phasers, or the Federation 32nd Century refit phasers. They both look nearly the same, but the difference is the first ones are green and the refit ones are blue. I'm pretty sure the green ones are from the actual 32nd Century ships, and the blue ones are from the Discovery refit, but really they're similar enough that you can use whichever one you want. Frankly, I like the blue ones better. The proc on each of these is also a bit different. They both help lower your bridge officer cooldowns, but the math on them is a bit different from each other. And then there's the ships from the Kelvin Timeline. These ones are pretty easy to find on the exchange because they're just called Kelvin Timeline Phaser Emitter Array. These have a couple downsides. One, they're lockbox weapons. Two, they only come in beam array. And three, they have one of the worst procs. That said, if you like them, don't let that stop you. There's also ships from the Enterprise era. I say ships like there's more than one, which is technically true, but both of them are the NX. One is the low buy version and one is the legendary version. Anyway, Enterprise era phase cannons actually look a lot like the next generation era phasers, which means you can just use standard or agony phasers for those. Though I should mention that there is an Enterprise era themed weapon set available in the low buy store. This isn't exactly the best set in the game, but if you're really going for an authentic Enterprise era look, it might be worth using to you. Though I should mention that the phase cannons in this set, while they look like beams, they actually function like cannons. This actually isn't a bad thing though if you're mixing these with other beams, because both versions of the NX come with the preferential targeting starship trait. That trait is commonly used on beam overload builds, because it lets you further buff beam overload by activating the ability Scatter Volley. This way, by activating Scatter Volley, you not only buff beam overload, but you also give yourself a little bit of spread damage with the phase cannons. This is typically done with the Terran Task Force Cannon on Beam Overload builds, but it would certainly work in this case as well, though you wouldn't be doing quite as much damage. Speaking of cannons, I really haven't talked much about those, largely because there's really only one Starfleet ship that uses cannons, the Defiant. With cannons, you're obviously going to want to use a Scatter Volley or Rapid Fire build. Rapid Fire, I think, looks a little bit more authentic to the show, but not only does Scatter Volley do better for DPS, but its extension trait is much easier to obtain. In fact, it actually comes on the Defiant, or to be more accurate, the Valiant, the T6 version of the Defiant, as well as the Legendary Defiant, and like six other ships. Honestly, it's hard not to have that trait at this point. The Defiant is a next-gen era ship, so that's going to use standard or agony phasers. Dual heavy cannons are the best for DPS, but personally I think normal dual cannons look more authentic to the show. Which of these factors matters more to you is going to be up to you. If you really want to get the authentic Defiant feel though, you're going to want to get the Tier 4 and 5 versions of the Defiant as well. Tier 4 version comes with the Phaser Quad Cannons, which are the only weapons in the game that actually look and sound like the weapons that the Defiant used in Deep Space Nine. And the Tier 5 version comes with a cloaking device console, which gives the ship a cloak. Being a Federation ship, it doesn't normally have that, but it had one in the show, so this might be worth it to you. Coupled with the Tier 6 version's console, Quantum Warhead module, you'll get a set bonus that turns that cloak into a battle cloak, making it more effective in combat. Of course, the Legendary version will already have all of these, so if you own the 10th Anniversary bundle, you're covered. For era-specific torpedoes, again, there are a number of options, though not quite as many. For the next-gen era, the choice is typically between Photon and Quantum Torpedoes. For a forward-facing build using dual beam banks or any sort of cannons, I would stick with just standard Photon or Quantum Torpedoes, depending on the ship. But if you're using something with beam arrays, you're probably going to be running that ship like a broadside build, meaning most of your damage will be focused to the sides of your ships rather than the front. Fortunately, both Photon and Quantum Torpedoes have a wide-angle version meaning they'll have a firing arc of 180 degrees, making them far easier to use on a broadside build. 
For Photon Torpedoes, it's actually the Prolonged Engagement Torpedo, available in the Phoenix Store. And for Quantum, it's the Wide Angle Quantum Torpedo, which is available on any Sea Store version of the Sovereign class. So that's the Regent, Archon, Vizier, and the Legendary version. The Standard Photon Torpedo, or the Prolonged Engagement version, also works for the Motion Picture era as well. And the Enterprise era version too. Photonic torpedoes look pretty much identical to standard photons, though if you want to go a little bit more old school for your Enterprise era build, that Lobi set I talked about earlier also includes a spatial torpedo, like what they used in the first two seasons. The only place to get an original series style photon torpedo is from the K-13 fleet holding. They function just like standard photon torpedoes, but have unique visuals and sound effects. Same with the Discovery era photon torpedo. They function just like standard photons, they just have a unique visual and sound effect. Though the only way to get a Discovery-style Photon Torpedo is from the episode Secrets in the Age of Discovery arc. There is an advanced Photon Torpedo that comes with the Discovery Constitution class ships, which looks like the Photon Torpedo we saw the Enterprise use in Season 2 of Discovery. The downside is that this is a standard issue weapon, meaning it's not upgradable, so it's kind of useless. So with that, you could either go with the normal Discovery-era Photon Torpedo, or go with a standard Photon Torpedo, which actually looks pretty similar. We haven't really gotten a good look at torpedoes in the 32nd century, so it's kind of hard to say what they look or sound like. Currently in the game, 32nd century ships come equipped with a torpedo that looks like the standard Discovery era photon torpedo. So for now, I'd probably just use that. And for the Kelvin timeline, much like the phasers, there's also a Kelvin timeline photon torpedo. These are actually kind of interesting because they don't hit quite as hard as standard photon torpedoes, but they have a noticeably faster firing rate, so you could potentially get more DPS out of one of these. Now, for Bridge Officer and Console abilities, I get a little particular with these. I try to stick with abilities that you might actually see used in the show on a regular basis. Or at least use abilities that don't have big crazy animations like you wouldn't normally see in the show. At least not outside special circumstances. Obviously, no matter what abilities you use, you're always going to have some sort of weird animation going on on your ship. That's just a consequence of Star Trek Online being an MMO. But I try to avoid stuff that's some sort of big crazy plasma tornado, or something that fires some crazy huge torpedo that definitely wouldn't fit inside my ship's photon torpedo launchers. Even something like Gravity Well is something I would avoid, just because that's the type of thing you wouldn't normally see used in the shows on a regular basis. So I've tried to stick with consoles that are just straight up damage boosts, like the Domino and DPRM, or ones that have valuable passive stats, like Lorca's Custom Fire Control or the Assimilated Module. Stay with the Bridge Officer abilities. I typically stick with Bridge Officer abilities that are going to buff my weapons damage, though there are a couple of exceptions. Like on this build, I'm using Tractor Beam, which isn't something you always see used in a ship battle, but a Tractor Beam is a common enough thing in Star Trek that it still felt thematically appropriate. Now, obviously, these restrictions are really just me. It's a theme build. More importantly, it's your theme build. So don't feel like you need to restrict yourself to every single thing I'm saying here. I realize I've only been covering Federation ships in this video, but that's because Federation ships have the most variety among them but with what I've talked about here today, should give you a good enough idea on what to do for other factions as well. Like for Klingons, you can use standard disruptors. Romulans, you can use plasma or standard disruptors again. Cardassians are going to use spiral wave disruptors. And Jem'Hadar are going to use Polaron. Actually, the Gamma Reputation offers inhibiting Polaron beams. Personally, I think these look more authentic to the Dominion weapons we saw in the show rather than the standard Polaron weapons in the game. Though I should mention that their proc isn't as good. K-13 also has original series style disruptors and plasma weapons, if you want to go for a more original series route. And there are disruptor weapons of the Discovery Era weapons I talked about, if you want to have a more Discovery Era themed Klingon. Now, I did record an ISC for this build on the Legendary Sovereign, just to give you guys an idea of what this kind of build could potentially do. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different for everyone, depending on what ship and gear you're using, but the main point of this video was both to be a general guide for these sort of canon-inspired builds, and to show that they could keep up in high-level content. So, let's go watch the ISC and then the parse.
208k DPS. That's not bad. With theme builds like this, I'm usually happy if I can get over 100k, so this is pretty nice. Frankly, this build probably would have done better if Augie wasn't in here in a 700k build. Can you believe he did that in a beam overload build? That man is out of control. So yeah, that is how I would set up a ship to make it look more authentic to the TV shows. Obviously, there's no strict guide on how to do this sort of thing. It's very much up to interpretation, so feel free to do whatever you want on your own build. But I hope this video has helped you in making your own canon-inspired build. Anyway, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I know you've all heard it before, but it really does help the channel, and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.